My name is Dmitry. Uh, I'm from Fluence Labs. I'm CTO and co-founder of Fluence Labs. Um, and I want just to share some uh, raw thoughts about uh, computer data, computer data networks, discovery, and composability, and how Fluence can help uh, what's our approach on this topic. So I decided to go straight for, from the fundamentals. I will speak about data, compute, computer data, network, what does it mean to have a computer data network and why do we need many? Uh, what does it mean discoverability, composability? Uh, what does it mean computer data networks, discovery and composability? And finally, when we have some understanding of the problem, uh, I will uh, tell what we at Fluence do uh, to help with this uh, problem. So first of all, data and compute. Uh, data is things known or assumed as facts, making the basis of reasoning or calculation. And uh, to compute, from my opinion, uh, it means to shuffle data in a certain way for a purpose. So data uh, is usually needed in a different form that it appears. It appears in some raw form, but it's needed in another. And uh, what does it mean another form? It means aggregated, reshaped, analyzed, filtered, augmented, indexed, searched, and so on. So we need the data in uh, many, many shapes and forms. And compute actually accompanies data all the way, uh, and uh, the same calls for data. So if uh, we want to capture the fact, uh, it actually means that we can yield this fact uh, without providing something before it. It means that we have some way uh, represented as an arrow here to get some data as letter A. If we transform data, it means that we provide data, we have arrow, uh, some compute to have another data. If we have uh, an intermediary state that is uh, held between different invocations uh, of uh, uh, compute, uh, then we have this kind of arrow uh, like state monitor, that we have some internal state and input and provide the new kind of the state uh, and output. And this uh, state change, it may uh, help with augmenting data, it may mean storing data and providing nothing uh, as the result and so on. Uh, and finally, to finalize the life cycle of uh, the data, uh, we need to consume it uh, for example, to show it, and we have some kind of syncs uh, for the data. Uh, and it means that you provide the data as an argument, and you have nothing uh, inside the system uh, out of it, uh, but you have some effect, for example, something shown on, on the display. So there is no way to compute without data. Compute without data makes no sense, absolutely no sense. You can cannot see anything. if. Compute without data makes sense. It means that there is data involved, actually. It, it was consumed or exported or something happened. And data without compute is uh, the lost fact. Uh, it happened, but it even doesn't, isn't stored. So it's just, just lost. So some more arrows and letters. Uh, we have some predefined compute uh, and uh, Providing the data and getting CID is also a compute job. Uh, and uh, uh, it's not always trivial to compute CID, and it's not always easy to understand uh, that uh, uh, this file represents uh, this CID and not something else. Um, and sometimes we offload this compute, even this compute from the client to the server, for example, if we stream data, or if uh, the data is too big and we just upload it, and then we get back CID. We have uh, uh, this arrow inversed, and that's not quite compute. If we get from CAD to data, it means much more than compute because we need to discover it. And uh, a lot more things involved here. And uh, uh, we can think about the user-defined compute, uh, which is an arrow uh, without data yet, but ready to get it. And uh, uh, Luckily, we can represent it as data as well, like WebAssembly binary or uh, Docker or like any code finally is, is data.
So compute over data, uh, by definition, uh, from my point of view, implies that you can get an arrow C and place it where the data is, so that finally you compute over data. And place it where the data is means either to move compute closer to the data or to get data closer to compute. And both cases make sense. Uh, and uh, uh, I'm not sure that we can limit all the use cases uh, just to one, like batch processing, or to another, like um, runtime, uh, real-time processing. Uh, both cases make sense. And fundamentally, uh, it makes sense because it's just more efficient. Uh, the closer the compute to data, probably the more efficient the computation is. And uh, it brings more privacy, more security, uh, and uh, overall it's, it's fine. Then a few words about the network. Uh, it's a concept which is orthogonal to compute and data. And uh, I wish we could just uh, skip it. Uh, if we could uh, uh, not think about the network, things would be much, much, much easier. But in the real world, physical world, there is um, such a big latency and bandwidth distinction uh, of physical resources that we are forced to treat these resources as somewhat independent peers. So um, we just have to, it's physics. But if these resources have something important in common, uh, if they share some attribute, then we can organize a network out of them. Uh, so this network is identified by this attribute basically. For example, if we know uh, that uh, some peers are storing a data set, or we want to uh, put this role on these peers, like say, these peers, please do store it. Uh, we want to identify it as a kind of a network so that they can help each other or maybe they can help us uh, to uh, work with this data. Or if we have some special peers with uh, specific compute capabilities, uh, GPU access uh, peer is very different to laptop, for example and maybe we want to uh, organize them in networks as well. Or particular things served for a particular user. Uh, for example, if I uh, made uh, some kind of a deal with some service provider, then these peers, despite uh, the fact that there are better peers for uh, like physical resources, but these peers are ready to serve me because I have financial relationships with them, for example. So all of this matters and means that uh, we have a lot, a lot of networks. Uh, we have a place uh, to have a lot of networks, which kind of could be very big as protocols, but they also could be very small. For example, uh, all the providers of a particular file for a, C a given CID on the IPFS network, um, effectively, they also form a kind of a network by this attribute. And uh, basically, network means uh, shared connectivity uh, and or agreements over data within a set of peers. So either you can uh, find the root of the network, and that means that it is a network. Uh, for example, uh, if you can get a peer-by-peer -peer ID by Ktemlia, it's mainly about shared connectivity. Or we have some agreement over data like consensus, uh, all the different kinds of consensus, uh, including eventual, weak consensus, like strong consensus, any type. It's about agreement over data that all the peers will probably share or be capable to yield some particular data that like conforms to some invariants. Uh, now let's speak about uh, computer data networks, uh, also with arrows and letters. If we think about IPFS as a network as a whole, uh, then every IPFS deployment uh, forms constitutes a, a computer or data network. And the compute here at least is uh, getting CID or getting from CID to, to, to files. And uh, uh, the notation could be something like we can yield a function from CID to maybe maybe data. If it exists, if we can find it, maybe data. Uh, we can think about every IPFS node uh, 
uh, as a single peer cache network or any, any subset of these uh, uh, nodes as a, uh, a cache network so that we provide a peer ID and have this function that works with a, a very different um, like latency uh, because we look up locally uh, and use IPFS as a hot hash instead of using the network for content discovery. It's very different. For compute, uh, we should have many compute over data networks uh, for different geography, for example, if you wanted them uh, locally or for types of compute or for uh, different ways to compose this compute. But fundamentally, it means that somehow we can have an access to the peers that can take our compute in some form of abstract arrow like WebAssembly, for example, or Docker or whatever. Uh, and after that, uh, we will have an ability to execute these computations on data. So the notation becomes longer and longer. And uh, uh, also we can think that a single device, even one device or like a small set of user devices uh, that belongs to one user, for example, uh, they also constitute a single device computer data network uh, that, uh, for example, provides the way to capture facts from, I don't know, measurements or uh, click streams or something like that. So we can think about all these kinds of devices and workloads as uh, different kinds of uh, computer data networks. Uh, then comes discovery. Uh, so discovery means that we need to yield some capabilities out of thin air. So previously we had this, from nothing we get some capability and that's discovery. Uh, and we have a lot of different domains uh, that we want to discover for and in, uh, for example, for uh, different types of data sources. We want to discover data sources, be it devices, uh, access to the chain, access to sensors, uh, to external events, to randomness. It's different data sources, but we need to find the way to get this data. Or for a type of data store, uh, cold storage, like Filecoin, hot storage, uh, uh, blockchain as a storage, whatever. Uh, or a particular data set, we need to find this particular data set. Or a kind of compute capacity, we need GPU, we need uh, whatever, uh, we need a ZK kind of uh, compute uh, so that we need certain proofs. Um, and uh, does this compute uh, fit for a certain data that we want to provide? Is it possible to connect data source to uh, compute capacity? Do we need to prepare the data before we do compute? Uh, and for efficiency of everything above, uh, we need to employ very different discovery algorithms. So there must be some solution on top of that uh, to think about all those problems uh, in some uh, layer that just simplifies them or at least uh, let's us uh, speak about it, like uh, to have the common common language uh, to speak about all these problems uh, while they seem different. And in Web 2, we have a solution. So uh, when we just do Web 2, we have a lot of easy ways. The most easy ways is to point on the local capabilities, like local host, file system, local CPU, or something that you have in the web browser, just call function in JavaScript or write a variable. That's the access to data and to compute. Very simple. Or for the rem remote capabilities, usually just uh, have a rest endpoint, uh, something XYZ, uh, like uh, some host in Fura, I don't know. Um, that gets to DNS for discovery. And uh, we have this discovery layer hidden in a fundamentally centralized way, but uh, if we get to the endpoint that uh, fulfills our needs, uh, we're just happy. So absolutely good. Web2 is very optimized for that. And we may discover computer related networks the same way with the gateways. Uh, and many people are happy uh, doing just in Fura or something like that. So let's switch to composability. Uh, 
what to compose and why. Uh, what we want is to utilize the same network uh, or sub-network, it could be a small network, uh, or the same compute capabilities or the same data, uh, wherever they are, as building blocks for something more complex uh, to deliver the value to the end user. One example uh, is uh, data processing pipelines. So uh, you have some device, uh, something that produces the facts that we want to capture and analyze. Uh, it could be really a device like the phone, but it could be the chain, the access to chain, it could be uh, the source of time of randomness, other triggers. Uh, then we have the edge, uh, like uh, relaying node in uh, uh, lib P2P, for example, or uh, the closest cache, uh, or uh, uh, we could uh, like do some filtering, pre-processing, and uh, it means that we want to do it very close to the device just for optimization uh, because we, we might get an insight very fast or we can filter out unnecessary data very fast or we can do a small aggregate and uh, uh, prevent the further processing until we collected some data. So it's efficient. After that, uh, we could have some real-time processing uh, close to the edge. Probably we want to have the same region. Uh, we want to have good latency. Uh, to get some real-time insights or to store some data in uh, uh, the read models uh, to have some databases for like application level. And finally, we store it into probably Filecoin uh, to the cloud. We accumulate a lot of data, we batch process it because we have a lot of data available and uh, this is a very different, different domain. So the question is, if you want this, um, how to express this pipeline uh, what is the way to to speak this pipeline, to approach this pipeline, uh, how, to, how to code it, especially given that uh, we have a lot of uh, discovery processes here and uh, different protocols, because probably edge nodes is a sub-network that is capable for doing one thing, while cloud is a very different set of and different hardware, different capabilities, different connectivity, different latency. So, um, and where should this uh, data pipeline be expressed? Given that, uh, for example, we have just these four levels. Uh, who owns this pipeline from one level to another? Uh, who writes this code? Who deploys it? Uh, and where to deploy it? Is there any place to deploy it? Who, uh, and uh, yeah, uh, on the way, we have the user data, probably. We get some insights, we make some decisions, uh, we should transfer some permissions. So a lot of questions about security uh, that uh, were like ignored or uh, exploited uh, in the web of the world, but we want to do better. So for compute over data networks, uh, discovery and uh, Composability, if we take all the words together. Uh, so what we want is to utilize many networks with different kinds of resources and attributes. Uh, we want to point to these resources and have the, the single flow of processing. We want to take resources by geography latency, by different ways to establish security, some something decay, some consensus, some trust, uh, different kind of uh, access to data. Uh, it could be real-time, hold, call chain, whatever. We have different compute capabilities uh, and we want to point on them. Uh, and uh, we have a very limited amount of peers actually connected to the end user, to the device. Uh, and uh, that's the question, is it connected or not? Can we only pull data or can we also push notifications and so on? And we want to have uh, a single pipeline and in this case, uh, we will have this computer data as a big product composed of different uh, protocols. So, um, coordinator to organize, to orchestrate this workflow seems very inefficient. Uh, because uh, if we uh, think about just these four layers, there could be much more 
there could be less, but if you think about just four layers, then there is no good dedicated place or location and even geographical location or protocol-wise location. What, what network should we, should it be like located in or should it be a web to like uh, endpoint? Just no very efficient place. In Web2, it's not the case because you can have everything in one place and uh, you can um, see, w you can have one endpoint that actually leads to the workflow being executed inside uh, like the, the cloud. But in Web3, probably not. And uh, uh, also, if you have a coordinator, uh, it's gonna be too powerful in terms of uh, uh, ability to censor uh, the facts or uh, to change them or to uh, move them to some other storage that user haven't authorized to work with this uh, data and so on. Uh, all of this could be managed inside a single network. So if we say that compute over data is uh, actually about creating just one network that, that is a one-stop shop that does everything uh, probably it would be enough uh, to have some protocol inside this network uh, to discover the right place uh, to have the call and so on. But in the real life, even for Web2, one network is not enough. And uh, even in Web2, we have different uh, solutions for the edge and different regions and uh, different stores and so on. So probably what we want to have is uh, finally a flow of service composition that is coordinator free, permissionless, uh, like ready to uh, be composed and integrated with different protocols. Uh, and uh, we want to have uh, this workflow to, to look somewhat like this. So we have uh, certain steps uh, and we can describe the workflow uh, be it um, some kind of controller for uh, a user interface or really data processing or anything like that. Uh, we can abstract it out to something that uh, consists of uh, very simple steps. For example, I want to get data, then I want to discover uh, the edge peers which are uh, ready to serve me. Like, ideally they should be prepared uh, then I run compute on, on the edge. I wait for the proper results uh, given the consensus or security capabilities of these edge peers and proofs. After that, I discover some kind of fog or some intermediary uh, computations uh, for the real time. I move uh, the control flow here, run compute on fog, wait for proper results and proof. And after that, I discover storage. Uh, like, why should I discover? Be because it could depend on the data uh, that I got from, from the fog compute. For example, I could determine the, the right shard uh, which points on the subnetwork, on small network, only during this computation. I cannot, uh, probably, I cannot have everything in place uh, from the very beginning. But I can discover every next step, and uh, after uh, this, like, uh, Discover, run, wait, discover, run, wait, discover, run, wait, and uh, finally done. Uh, but if these peers are not prepared to serve me, uh, if uh, they're not uh, warmed up, uh, then I want to have uh, the pipeline like this. Uh, I try to discover edge. If I cannot, uh, I'm trying to do latency-based discovery to find the closest peers, uh, deploy the code on them so that to prepare the, the edge nodes. The same for the fog. I want to find the capable peers if they are not ready, if they are not in cache, deploy the content on them. So I, on every step, uh, I do some computations. I have the decision about the next step and uh, uh, I push my requirements to have the next step prepared for me uh, so until, until everything is done. And uh, when it's done, it doesn't mean that it's just stored. Uh, I might want to have uh, the proofs that everything was done, that everything is okay. Or 
uh, maybe I want to uh, distribute some incentives uh, or to have some acknowledges. So ideally the pipeline should look like this and it should not depend on any, any particular network. So that's about the Fluence approach. Uh, we, given all of this in mind, uh, we created a set of tools that makes it possible like today. So first of all, uh, we have uh, an Aqua. Uh, Aqua is the way to express these workflows, uh, which are uh, like decomposed into this uh, discovery compute, uh, discovery compute steps uh, with maybe some provisioning, like deploy something or not, or failover or not, and so on. Uh, and uh, you can compose distributed workflows. Uh, which are suitable for open networks from these basic steps. It's push-based, so next peers are resolved on the fly, and you can take uh, the actual real-time connectivity uh, into account so that you can optimize uh, the way. You, you don't say uh, want. Uh, you say I'm going here because it's uh, meaningful for me. Uh, and a push-based approach means that uh, still having an open network, uh, you involve the minimal amount of peers possible. And the minimal amount of peers means that uh, it depends heavily on the discovery mechanics. Uh, if you have log n, uh, then you have log n peers. Uh, if you have several uh, logarithmic uh, discovery process like in Kademlia, uh, then uh, you have k log n or something like that. But if you can um, reduce the scope of uh, uh, lookup, so for example, using not the whole Kademlia or the whole network, uh, pretending that all the peers are the same, but instead you, you if you can, uh, using some attribute, uh, select a subset of the big network and organize some kind of Kademlia on top of this, uh, then it's much, much, much more performant. And if you have a hot cache, it's even better. So, um, but fundamentally, it depends on how exactly you write the code and you have full control. Uh, it works on top of libp 2 p uh, but it doesn't uh, require you to recompile, rebuild, uh, uh, redeploy the network or the networks. Uh, so if uh, some protocol is uh, ready to serve Aqua, then it's just ready and uh, you can use it for composition uh, without any additional like uh, communication with the team, I don't know, protocol forking and so on. And you can have different workflows. Uh, so it's open for integration with the, all the other protocols. And uh, uh, as the result of execution as the side effect, uh, it provides an audit log uh, that uh, only what you expected to happen have happened, and you can use uh, this log, and we are going to use this log for uh, the incentives layer. Uh, with Aqua, you can uh, express these smaller networks on top of uh, compute over data uh, network protocols. So. Uh, Subnetwork uh, is a network formed around a certain resource and or attribute, for example, data for a user or peers of protocol N close to region G. It's uh, an attribute or a set of attributes or peers capable to access some data like blockchain B, uh, which run uh, Fluence and uh, uh, at the same time, uh, which run, I don't know, uh, Filecoin, for example, so that you can access the new blocks. And uh, uh, with Aqua, you can do subnetwork formation uh, using Aqua just libraries to interconnect, sync, bring code on peers, uh, deploy provision, and so on. Because all these um, network concepts of having connectivity or having agreement over data they could be also decomposed to uh, single workflows. And if you can have a set of workflows to run on the network without uh, the end user interaction, 
with these workflows, but instead with the, the subnetwork, then effectively you have the subnetwork. Um, and uh, you, you can have subnetwork discovery as an Aqualabra as well. And the uh, composition of subnetworks, which means pushing data uh, and control flow uh, to the next and next and next subnetworks, meaning peers of these subnetworks, because nothing magical. It's just a new line character. Uh, you get from one line uh, of the code to, to another, and it could mean moving uh, compute and data to the next peer. Uh, and finally, Aqua is part of uh, Fluence, and you can think about Fluence as the workflow stack for compute over data network uh, discovery and uh, composability. Yeah, COD and DNC. Uh, so Fluence accompanies protocols to help them organize push-based and purpose-driven workflows. So uh, we are open for different protocols as a sidecar or as a P2P uh, protocol. Uh, with Aqua, the language, you can describe the workflow, orchestrate provision, and so on. Uh, and uh, we have uh, Maureen. Maureen is a WebAssembly uh, runtime uh, to run compute. Or uh, probably, uh, highly likely, to lift another API or protocol running on the same peer to Aqua. So just to enable the composition, you can write a very small uh, WebAssembly uh, to use the capabilities that you already developed uh, in another, uh, another protocol. Or if you don't want to do it, if you do want to do all Fluence uh, with all the portability and so on, you can do pure WASM. Uh, and Fluence as network is a lip 2 p based network for Aqua and Marine to enable a discovery and composition of all the parts. There is a lot, a huge amount of missing details uh, in, my, in my talk, so I was just sharing our thoughts and approach, and if you want to learn more, uh, take a look on fluence.dev, or uh, let's chat after, after this, and after the break, or during the break, uh, I see that everything is prepared. So thank you for your attention.